The POC was quite a simple design. We wanted to prove to the world that we were capable of making a flying aircraft. What we've done here is taken that idea and built upon it. Serif takes us on a journey towards certification and starts to build in the key redundancy and capabilities that we need. It's amazing the rate of change that we're seeing. Firstly, it's grown hugely in terms of the number of people and the diversity and the skills that we've got, but also the complexity and the capability of the vehicles that we're designing and developing have just hugely ramped up and it's a really, really exciting time. The big difference between Serif and POC is the, the rotor configuration. We've moved away from ducted fans um, and moved towards coaxial rotors. The main reason that we moved away from this layout was to address the redundancy issue. If we have a, one or two blades that come off, for example, we need to be able to maintain stable flight. As well as with the ducts, there's a couple of nasty aerodynamic uh, phenomena that, that occur when you're moving forward at speed. What we ended up with was a, an aircraft with a significant payload capability and a, an ability to withstand different failure scenarios that the POC simply couldn't do. We're at Lambetta in North Wales, Snowdonian airspace, ready for some testing of our new vehicle to really kind of accelerate the test program. It's much easier to do that off-site and having a, a key team focused on, on this one project. One of the advantages that we have as a business is that we build hardware and it allows us to effectively feel fast, um, build something, test it, make sure we get all the learning we can from it and then iterate. One of the main challenges in the Serif project specifically is um, not having a maintenance manual to work from. So there's a lot of scope for new ideas, new technologies, there's no time to get bored. <laughs> We're starting to build in more reliability, more safety systems, the same as you would have in general aircraft at the moment. And we're looking at pushing that technology and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So we have a scale model drone which um, has the same configuration as a full-size aircraft, so we can familiarise the pilot with the handling of the vehicle, we can test the integration of the systems and tune them, and if something goes wrong, the consequences are much lower than if we're doing it with a full-size vehicle. The test that we'll be doing today is uh, a motor out during the flight. The pilot will take off on altitude hold and then what we're going to try to do is to kill a um, motor out on the roll axis and see how the aircraft will behave. Motor out in three, two, one. Motor out. Big loss of altitude, but it's recovering. Within these projects, there's a lot of things that have never been done before. Uh, we're working with technologies that we're having to take from other industries, incorporating them into aerospace. The great thing about working here is that it feels like a, a big family that keeps growing. You have this feeling of safety that you're able to share any problems if you don't know something. Every person here brings something unique, whether that is a set of skills or an experience that they've had, um, or if it's just a personal trait that they bring along, um, it all adds something to the team here. It doesn't matter you know, what your role is and what you do. If you've got an idea, you can put it through, and if it's a good idea, it will be taken on board. So this style of working is really motivating for people. Um, they feel empowered to be able to play a bigger role in, in the aircraft programme than they would perhaps in a, in a larger aerospace company. They can be more creative, they can try ideas out and they can develop uh, different methodologies and tools that perhaps wouldn't be the norm in aerospace. So looking forward to this first flight with the full bodywork on, but when you push the boundaries, there's always things that can go wrong or things that you didn't account for, so you always have to be prepared for those. We're looking to go that little bit higher, a little bit faster. There's also a bit of nerves because there's been about a year and a half's worth of effort into this project. Um, it only takes one of hundreds of parameters to be slightly incorrect for the flight not to end in its success.
Today we have achieved our um, first long uh, flight with our second aircraft. It really has been a, a big team effort and lots of hours, days, nights <laughs> spent um, testing this aircraft. It's like an overwhelming experience. You, you feel full and proud and happy and you can't stop thinking that you want even more <laughs> of this. The vehicle we're now designing is actually a massive step up from Serif, so ability to carry potentially five people uh, much faster, much longer range, much more efficient, but also fundamentally is being designed to give us a really great stepping stone towards a certified product. Working in eVito right now, it's almost a bit like a modern day space race. There's all these companies who are racing to try and be the first to bring this kind of vehicle to the market. Hopefully we can leave our mark on it and be in the history books. <laughs>